picture this. A computer monitor full of many emulators, thousands of ROMs to choose from. Now picture this. One skinny, moist, 140-pound Hawaiian boy slurpity slurping up his coconut milk all while playing these emulators and ROMs. I guess you could say I'm in emu paradise. <laughs> Alright, let's just get this out of the way. For those of you who don't know the news, MU Paradise, the biggest, liable, safe, and convenient ROM and emulation website, has removed all their classic Nintendo ROMs for legal reasons. Recently, Nintendo filed a multi-million dollar lawsuit against a couple of other ROM sites, and to avoid this problem, MU Paradise unfortunately had to remove all the Nintendo ROMs from their website. And can I just say, Nintendo, you can't just destroy the biggest classic gaming archive like a name of a classic Nicolas Cage movie, Gone in 60 Seconds. You gotta respect these games like a national treasure. <laughs> okay, okay. This is getting wild. At heart. What is this, a relax relax video? The only ROM site that we could trust is now destroyed, and it's not even worth going on that website anymore. I mean, you don't see me typing in the URL, clicking on the Atari Jaguar section, and getting Trevor McFur in the Crescent Galaxy. Like, what even is this game? It's gotta be something like, oh, oh, oh it's a furry game. Oh, MU Paradise was a magical place. It was quite literally an emulation paradise, hence the name of the website. It started on March 27, 2000 and quickly became one of the biggest ROM sites of all time. It was the safest place to get quality emulators and ROMs. Most ROM sites can be a little shady. Literally. Like, if you're gonna have a potentially illegal ROM website, at least make it look appealing. What's this guy doing? Is, is he winking at me? Is, is he hinting at something? Or what, uh, what, what is he doing? You almost don't even feel safe on some of these sites with all the ads and the black backgrounds. But like even this site has a devil as a mascot further showing you you're on the wrong website. But this, this was clean. It was safe. It was almost as if it was a, yeah, yeah, we get it. Whenever you go on these sites, you're basically risking your own PC's life just to play some of that sweet, sweet Super Mario World. Mwah! Now, I think we can all agree that this was a dumb move by Nintendo, but it does make sense. Of course, I have to address that ROMs are illegal to a point. If you have the physical copy of the game, it doesn't matter. But if you don't actually own the game, it's illegal. But there are certain situations where I will download a ROM to play a certain game. I'm not afraid to say that. Who in their right mind would pay $430 just to play the Flintstones on NES? I would much rather just play the game through a ROM and at least see if it's worth that much. They have ported the more better rare games on Virtual Console, but I would argue that even just trying the more obscure ones just to see how they are is okay. You're not gonna find these games physically, and I can tell you now, you're probably not gonna pay for most of these games unless you're a rich game collector, and if so, I respect that. But even the guys that do purchase these games aren't gonna risk playing their prized possession. No way, nine times out of 10, they're gonna download a ROM to play the game. And the only time they would play the game is to test it out to see if it's legit. Now, the only way to fix this illegal issue is to have a way to identify your possession of the game. I was thinking of a ROM code type deal that they could distribute somehow, but the problem with that is the internet. There's always going to be a way around this kind of stuff, and I don't think Nintendo quite gets that. ROMs are going to stay around forever. Once it's on the internet, it's there for good. Some people are saying that it'll be harder to access these ROMs, and while I do agree with this, I believe it will only be for a certain time. Eventually, the ROMs we have will spread again. There's no way people are not archiving them. I guarantee that people are archiving ROMs as we speak. But that's not to say you can trust these people either. All this illegal stuff is important to talk about, yeah, yeah, but can we talk about the people that actually own the physical games? Ever thought of that? Cause why download a free ROM of a game that you physically own when you can get the exact same game for five bucks on Virtual Console for the fourth freaking time? There's only a certain amount of time when these games will go kaput, broken, never to be played again on your system. You can only blow in your cartridge so many times. You can only scrub your game so many times until they're raw. Not only that, but what if your system dies? There's no way to play these games. They just sit there and do nothing. 
literally my situation right now. And honestly, the thing that bothers me the most is that Nintendo isn't even trying to repay what they've done. They don't have Virtual Console on the Switch, and it looks like it isn't even coming anytime soon. The closest thing we have coming is online NES games? Oh gee, I can finally play a selection of NES games that I've played millions of times and is probably smaller than the NES Classic selection of games. Thanks, Nintendo. Nintendo has done a lot of things right this past year, but the thing that they can't just seem to figure out is online gaming. They just don't get it. They're still living in the era of friend codes and useless voice chat apps. They shouldn't even be allowed to have a paid service if they can't even get simple online mechanics that are required these days. If Nintendo wants the fans to be happy, give them a virtual console. If you're not going to resell these classic games, then why do this? At least make some money off the people that are panicking over archiving their games. Because there's a lot of them. The NES and SNES classics just show how much people want these games to be re-released. That, and they're so stinking adorable. People don't realize the importance and how helpful and convenient a ROM can be. Without ROMs, fans' translations wouldn't be a thing. Dedicated fans takes the time to translate every single word in a game. If Nintendo won't translate Mother 3, the fans will, and they still complain. What about the people that can't record their classic games? Some people can't afford the modern capture cards for their systems, and even if they could, they don't support composite video. You have to buy these cheap little plastic converters that makes the quality even worse. There is HDMI mods out there for certain systems, but I'm not dropping 400 bucks on a modded N64. Emulation gets a bright and colorful picture, and sometimes it can be the best quality for recording. Of course, there's drawbacks for this. Some ROMs have glitches and not having the right controller for the system you're emulating. Pretty annoying stuff. But there is other ways around this. The classic systems are perfect examples of this. They give out the best quality that you can get, but they're limited to their selection of games. ROMs are both good and bad. It's just the way you look at them. Some people think they're bad even though you own a physical copy of the game. Some people think they're convenient or an archive. Some people use them just to play games they don't own. They have their ups and downs. With all that said, MU Paradise, you will be missed. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and download a ROM that you don't physically own. It is illegal. Emulation can only emulate the experiences you have with these games. The way these games are meant to be played on is their original console. No emulator or ROM can compete with the original experience. So if you're ever really craving that old gaming experience, go and get yourself that game physically. Go and get that system physically. If you want it that bad, you'll buy it. MU Paradise will go down in history as one of the greatest emulation websites of all time. You know, I kind of feel bad for all you guys. Well, you're all on your PCs with no ROMs. I'm over here with all the ROMs in the world. And uh, can I just show you my ROM collection that I have right here? Is it? <laughs> oh yeah, that that's the only one I have. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and man, we're almost to 1,000 subscribers. I, I can't believe it. Thanks so much for the support. I have a video plan for the future, but yeah, that, in the meantime, if you're new, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and we will see you guys later in the next video. Bye-bye.